Last Saturday, we had made a video on how to develop your own personal AI voice and visual assistant. Many of y'all were interested with this and wanted to see how you can actually add voice to your AI chatbot. And this is something that I'll be showcasing throughout today's video, where I'll showcase how you can create an AI chatbot with voice. Take a look at this demo video, which will showcase what we're actually going to create. What is Salesforce's revenue over the last couple of years? So I've actually I used the voice. Um, you know, I asked for, for the revenue and it's able to kind of cite sources, link to the document, etc. Well, you may be wondering, how are we going to do this? Well, this is with a platform that we've seen multiple times and you can already see on the screen called VectorShift. VectorShift is a no-code AI automation platform. It's an integrated framework that's combining no-code, low-code, and out-of-the-box generative AI solutions for you to build AI-powered search engines, AI assistants, chatbots, as well as various automations. And I've showcased multiple videos where I automated data entry processes. I've also automated lead generation, uh, sending out emails, and so much more, which I'll leave links to in the description below. But in general, this is a great platform that will help you automate almost anything with the help of ai and today i'm going to be using vector shift so that i can showcase how you can add voice to your ai chatbot where you can speak to it and or have the ai chatbot speak to you so what i want you guys to do is head over to vector shift's website and i want you to click on the get started button once you are here i want you to sign up with an account you can obviously create one with your email address with your google account or with github so once you sign up we can then proceed with the next step once you create an account, you'll then be sent over to the main pipeline dashboard. This is where you're going to be able to manage all your automations, your chatbots, as well as your voice bots or even forums. You're going to have a marketplace in which you can access ready-made templates to various automations and integrations to various tools. You have a knowledge base in which you can upload your own files. You have the ability to manage your automations, chatbots, forums, or even voice bots. And the great thing is with VectorShift, you're going to have the ability to to evaluate and access analytics to all of your ad automations or even chatbots. And this is how it looks once it finishes loading up where you can track the tokens in and out, you can track the runs, and this is a great way for you to understand what is happening. Now, what I want you guys to do is click on this plus sign and click on creating a new pipeline to create our AI chatbot with voice. So once you're here, you're going to be greeted with other templates such as automating your Gmail flow. You can automate content creation, chatbots, assistants, and basically these are ready-made templates that you can get started with right away. But in this case, we're going to be creating our pipeline from scratch. So click on this button over here and it will then lead us all forward to the next step, which is to the drag and drop builder that VectorShift provides, where you can simply place down nodes to help you build out your automations or chatbot. So in this case, we're placing down two uh, nodes right now the input node and the output node which is foundational for any workflow to be operational what we're going to be doing next is heading over to the large language model node and placing in an open ai large language model node this is to help us process our nlp tasks and you can either use open ai's provider or anthropic or many of the other model choices over here you can even use open source models so that's also a great option but in this case we're going to be utilizing open ai since it's the best provider at the moment and what we're going to be doing next is going over to knowledge base and adding our own knowledge base reader the reason why is because we're going to be placing in various sorts of content so that it's going to be able to provide answers based the, off the context that we provided next head over to the chat tab and make sure you place down a um, chat memory and the reason why we're placing down this node is because it can reference prior context of conversation to help provide better answers in the future you will also need to place down a chat file reader so that it's going to allow for you to upload documents in the chatbots to act as a source we're going to start off by creating our knowledge base so click on create new knowledge base and you can give this a name so in this case i'm just going to name it ai voice chatbot you can configure the chunk size but it's not recommended that you do this just keep it as a default for the processing model you have two different options you have llama parse or text track these are two great options now in terms of the embedding model, you can leave it as the default, but you also have the ability to choose between Cohere's embedding models as well as various OpenAI text embedding models. Now, there's other two options that are quite 
uh, important that you would want to keep in mind. You have the hybrid feature, which is where it combines traditional keyword search with semantic search. So it uses both the exact matches and the contextual understanding to achieve the most relevant search. So if you are to enable this with advanced document analysis, you're just going to get us a, a better version, a more accurate version of the ability to have the AI to extract information from your knowledge base. Because this is another option for you to have better techniques to extract, interpret, and analyze information from your document sources. So it's recommended that you keep these two on. You can choose the default uh, processing model or you can use Textract. Both are great. And then you can just simply click create. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be feeding this uh, research paper or not research paper, but a financial statement for Salesforce. And this is a pretty lengthy document with a lot of numbers and it's about 200 uh, pages. So I'm going to feed this by uploading the document. But the great thing with Vectorshift is that you have the ability to connect various applications to input your knowledge base. You have the ability to connect all of these different integrations within Vectorshift, which is great. You also have the ability to uh, add uh, URLs, have it so that it can scrape a URL or even upload a full on folder. And after you have created your knowledge base node, you can then go back into the pipeline and then you can configure the knowledge base reader even further where you can configure the chunks to add better retrieval units such as showing intermediate steps or expanding the query. These are all options that you can tweak and configure based off your own presets. Now, if you do go over to the open AI large language model node, you can do the exact same thing where you can stream the response. You can have it so that it can also show the sources. So this is a great way for you to configure the back end of the nodes as well. But now that we have everything ready, let's now give the open AI large language model node a system prompt and let's connect everything together. To save some time, I have given it a system prompt where I told it to answer the questions based on the context and I went along and I gave prompt to connect all of these different nodes together. To do so, you can then simply click on this prompt tab over here, click enter and you can simply click on insert variable. In this case now, what we're going to do is connect all of these separate nodes that we have. The input will be connected to the question, the knowledge base will be connected to the context, the file will be connected to the chat file reader and then the history will be connected to the chat memory. And now what we can do is we can have the response outputted to the output node and we basically have our functional ai voice chatbot flow created what you can do next is just simply click on deploy changes and you can actually export this but say if you want to test this out you can run a pipeline and see if the answers are correct or see if the flow is operational but since we know it is simply click on the export button click on the export pipeline button and click on export chatbot now once you have done that give it a name ai voice chatbot and then you can simply click on create chatbot now here is where you're going to be able to configure this even further you can have it as a copilot or as a chatbot you can change the styling the embed options and such forth now you can see that you're going to be able to access the voice feature as well as the ability to upload files and in this case once you have done that you can click on export you can open the chatbot as a link you can add authentication, a password, or you can embed this into a website. You can also have it integrated within Slack, with WhatsApp, or as an API. So now let's go ahead and test out our AI voice chatbot. Let's click on the microphone button and ask it a question about the document that we had uploaded. Hi there, could you give me some more insights on Salesforce's revenue? Click on the send button. And within a couple of seconds, we will have it generate a response for us. And there you go. Salesforce's total revenue for the three months ended April 30th, 2024 for 9.133 billion. And it will also provide us uh, sources and related questions. And there you go. You can even have it so that this response could be outputted as an audio. So in this case, you can simply chat or have it so that this is an AI voice assistant, which is what something we did in last video. But this is basically how you can create an AI chatbot with voice and this way you can have it so that you can chat with your chatbot by just simply recording your inputs and it can output text or it can even output voice as well. But that's basically it for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed it and you got some sort of value out of it. 
Vector Shift is a great platform and I truly recommend it because this is definitely something that I've made multiple videos on. It's something that has a lot of benefits attributed to it and I highly recommend that you take a look at this. I'll leave all the links in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon so that you can access our private Discord as well as free subscriptions to AI tools. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with whatever is happening in the world of AI. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.